Yo, good afternoon, everybody. How you doing? This is your spiritual coach, Coach Renz. And the reason why I emphasize today's spiritual coach is because I've spent some time over the last few days recognizing that many of my videos concerning spirituality kind of started moving into a let me prove how other people are wrong kind of sense. And then at the end, it was more about, you know, coming together as one people. But I'm starting to realize that my videos can't necessarily do that or be about that. That There are so many people who are finding themselves looking for a place to be, looking for other people who think like they think, who are coming out of religion, who are falling you know, out of this cloud of religious condemnment, and they're trying to find other people like themselves. I've, I've had so many people who say that they thought that they were by themselves, they thought they were, they were alone. I've found so many people who on other people videos who are commenting about, I'm so glad that I found you because I thought that I was alone. So there's a community of people who are leaving religion because they are discovering spirituality. And I recognize that in my videos, I want my videos to be more about discovering their spirituality and recognizing that they're not by themselves. You're not alone if this is your first time encountering me. You're not alone if you just stepped out of religion, especially if you're over the age of 40. It is incredibly scary when you are over the age of 40 because you had so many years of dogma, so many years, years of, 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 of misinformation given to you, beliefs, sayings, conditions, teachings, things ingrained in you that it's hard to walk away from. And when you do, you catch holy hell as they would like to call it. You catch so many, and especially from your family members, you catch people who just dog you, dog you, dog you, and dog you. Now, I didn't realize how important it was because for me, it's not something I experienced. I just really didn't. I mean, I had some family members. I have, uh, well, I had my, 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 majority of my family recognized that I was different early on. They recognized that I didn't think like them. The only hardship I experienced were from other Christians of churches and other families outside of my own personal family. But even in that, I, at an early age, I had an attitude of, I really don't give a flying flip what other people think about me. And then, but for a while I did fall into that trap. So what I want to um, start doing in my videos is be more about bringing the spiritual community together, the, the entire spiritual community together, not just one race, because you can't claim yourself to be conscious and spiritual if you're racist. So it'll be about the entire spiritual community who believes in a creator, but not necessarily follow the tenets of religion as is, it is the end all be all of understanding and knowledge of the creator that each one is like the six blind men touching an elephant, it's just different parts. And to sift through all the muck and the mire to discover the gold. You know, if you are in a religion and you're not sifting it, if you're not sifting it like a gold miner, a gold, uh, a gold miner who sifts through to look for the for the gold, who shakes away all the muck, the mire, the dirt, the the sand, and the other rocks to find that gold, then you're just you you you're, you're just you 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 have the gold, but it's so covered up and clouded with so many so much debris and so much dirt and so much filth, so many lies, so many misunderstandings, so many mistranslations that you can't see the gold. If you're looking for diamonds, but you're you're just taking all the rocks. You know, you're not just, you're not finding just the diamonds in the stream. You're just grabbing all the rocks. Then you, you, you're, you're holding on and you, you know you got a diamond, but you're holding on to the other rocks that are worthless just as much. And that is corrupting your ability to see the fullness of the diamond. So let's get right into this video today, which is about discernment. It's about discernment, which I think is apropos for this conversation. It's, it's about discernment. It's, Many people in religions, especially Christianity, they will quote Proverbs 3 where it, it talks about, it's, what is it, Proverbs 3 and 5, I got it right here in front of me, but Proverbs 3 and 5, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. Now, many people in religion, in Christianity especially, will grab onto that one and say that, well, this is why you don't really, you're not, you never was a, you never really was a Christian. You never really had a connection with God. You never knew the Holy Spirit. You never knew had Jesus or had a relationship with Jesus. But, and we're not going to go there right now. 
but you never had that because you you weren't leaning to your own you were leaning to your own understanding or the understanding of the devil or something like that but i recognize and, and i don't generally get into these discussions with these kinds of people because and this is one of the other reasons why over these last few days of meditation i decided to kind of switch the mode is that i have no time for negativity you see i can't spend my days arguing and fussing and fighting with people who are you know captivated into their own ignorance and and, and this and, and, and lack of understanding of the of the words of the wisdom that the pearls of wisdom that are there who have been so indoctrinated I can't waste my time with their negativity because that messes up my energy and we, we can't mess up my energy my energy no, no no I must protect my energy so I have to dispense disperse delete get rid of all of those kinds of people who want to try to engage me in those conversations and question my understanding. And, and the fact of discernment is a good place to begin. You see, they'll grab that little piece, but don't understand the whole thing about it. And this is one of the things that they'll try to, you know, they'll tell you the same thing. Well, you, you don't, you gotta read everything, right? Well, you gotta read around it, understand it, read the history, know the history. You gotta know that in Proverbs, this is Solomon teaching, right? So Solomon is trying to to break off you some wisdom. Now, first of all, you have to understand that in Proverbs 2 and 3, they're talking about gaining wisdom. The whole thing is about gaining wisdom, but it's filled with warnings. This piece of scripture of five and six, you know, of this Christian scripture, because this Christian, this of wisdom, this book of wisdom, really, you got to understand the full concept of it just to even understand those two little pieces that they just rip out and use for their own purposes. Sure, lean not to your own understanding, right? So here's the thing. Everywhere else before and after this, it talks about you gaining wisdom. So let's break down. What is wisdom? Is wisdom, and if you look at the, um, the tree of life, you know that wisdom... Is for, in order for you to have wisdom, you first have to have two other things. You have to have knowledge and you have to have understanding. Without knowledge and understanding, you cannot have wisdom. Now, I covered this when I talked about the trivium, but you have to, knowledge is facts, the gathering of facts. This is knowledge, grammar, gathering your facts. So in order for you to have wisdom, which is what this is talking about, you first have to go out and gather your facts. Then you have to put your facts together so that they coincide with each other so that they are you know working with each other and and let me speak on that for just a second the word coincide the word coincidence you know with the word coincidence comes from the word coincide that they go together specifically they go together perfectly coincidences coincidences aren't luck they aren't happen chance they are things that fit perfectly together. It's something about math. There's something within math that says that two angles coinciding is a coincidence. They come together perfectly. So bringing your, your, your understandings together, which this is logic, bringing all your facts together, creating logic so that you can say, hmm, these facts match up and lead to a path of that, which is wisdom, which is rhetoric which is you being able to take this these facts taste this knowledge and then put it into action and that's the other thing that i find missing with a lot of videos is that there's no action there's no you you get this knowledge you acquire this knowledge but then how do you how do you implement it what's the point of it if you're not implementing it into your life how does that make your life better so in all of this solomon is trying to teach about gaining wisdom and so when he says um, now, first, you have to understand, I'm not going to read every piece of this one, but in the very beginning, he says, my son, do not forget my teachings, but keep my commandments in your heart. Right off the rip, he's telling his son to keep, don't forget his teachings, the facts that he's been providing his son, the knowledge he's been providing his son. Don't forget them and keep the, keep them in my, keep your, keep my commandments in your heart. For they will prolong your life for many years and bring you peace and prosperity. You see, that's the thing about facts. Facts bring you peace and prosperity. Because facts take away the emotion of you trying to figure something out. Or the experience of, well, I had an expert, I have an experience with God. Well, I know, I know, I know Hindus who had an experience with Krishna. 
I know Hindus who had experience with, with Brahma. I know, I know Buddhists who had experiences with Buddha, who had experience with Kama. I have, I know Muslims who had experiences with Allah, who had experiences with Muhammad. I, I, I know Jews who had experiences with Yahweh. So we, there are people who, they've had experiences with every entity that they believe in. So your experience is not facts. You see, you will find peace and prosperity with facts. It's like in business. You, you can't open a business based on just faith. Oh, I feel like this will be a good business in this area where you will feel yourself broke. You will feel yourself into bankruptcy. You will feel yourself into a failed business. You will feel yourself into some bad credit because the facts may be that that is not a good area for you to open up your business. The facts may be that that is not a good profit with enough profit margin for you to be able to make a living on it. The facts may be that this business may not be a brick and mortar, but may be an internet play. The facts may be that this may not be an internet play, but be a brick and mortar play. The facts will tell you something totally different than what you feel your faith is. So you need to understand that. Matter of fact, there was someone I was coaching about three, four years, no, four years ago. And the, 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 the facts were that what she wanted to do was not something that you can make a living off of generally in the first five or six years that it took five or six years to build your credibility to be able to make a living off of it. But she wanted to make a living day one. So guess what? Her feelings got her into a position where she couldn't live on her own, got her into a position where she had to go get a job because she went on her feelings instead of saying, the facts are I can do this until I build up my credibility to do that. So the facts will lead you in the right direction. Your feelings will lead you in the wrong direction. Now, if you can match up your facts and your feelings so that you can use your gut instinct, then that's a good thing. But in this, in most cases, no. So lean into, don't lean to your own understanding. So what is he really talking about in this, right? Now, if you just go on the first part, he said, do not be wise in your own eyes. That just works right into what they want to tell you. Fear the Lord and shun evil for this bringeth health to your body and nourishment to your bones. That sounds pretty much like out of Christian. They, they good with that part, right? They are honor the Lord with your wealth, you know, with your first fruits of crops. That sounds pretty much like their, their teachings. So that, that's good. They're, they're still working it. They're still like saying, I'm, yes, I'm, I'm, um, I'm verified. I'm, I'm vindicated in what I'm saying because that's right. Don't lean to your own understanding. And I'm gonna get a little deeper in that part in a minute. But um, it, it, if you keep going though, you keep going. Right? At 13, he started saying something a little different. Blessed are those who find wisdom. Mm, wisdom. Those who gain understanding. Gaining understanding. For she is more profitable than silver and yields better returns than gold. Understanding gold and silver being the most precious metals at that time frame. Long life is in her right hand and in her left hand are riches and honor. Her ways are pleasant ways. Her, her path is, and, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her and who hold her fast and blessed. Now, think about it. What did they say you got to gain? Who is, who is this she? This she is finding wisdom. Those who gain understanding. You can't have understanding without facts. You can't have wisdom without understanding. Putting those facts together so you can implement them. And when you do, you find riches and honor. You find peace and prosperity. You know, it says, and then let's get down to 19. Ooh, because what is wisdom? By wisdom, the Lord laid the earth's foundation and by understanding, by understanding, he set the heavens in place. By his knowledge, the watery depths were divided and the clouds let do, let drop the dew. Hmm, wait a minute. Is it saying that God used facts and knowledge and wisdom and understanding to use science? I mean, you're talking about letting the cloud, the, wa the water separate and the clouds drop dew, which is rain. So you mean to tell me that he used that, that and I'm using he as a, as a um, I, the creator is a it just based on this one and what this is in but in order for there to be rain then you have to have high pressure and low pressure and certain amounts of humidity and all these things that combine and work together and then boom you get some rain like here in Atlanta we've been getting rain all summer because it's been working 
right? So that's knowledge, that's understanding, that's putting facts together. You know, by, in order to separate the waters, you had to have the volcanoes, you know, exploding out and creating all of that lava and it cooled by the ocean, so you creating land. You had to have tectonic plates moving and shifting in order to create mountains and, and to separate the waters. You had to have a lot of geology going on in order for all of that to happen. You had to have a lot of nature happening. You know, if you basically, it's like they say, if you look upon nature, you can find the evidence of God, right? So that tells you right there that this wisdom is the same wisdom that created and put everything in place, that put all these natural forces in place that created, that has gravity so that you don't just fly off the earth and so that the earth don't just fly away from the sun so that we stay with it. So all of that is knowledge. So this blind obedience, this blind obedience. So it's saying that you should have your discernment by not blind obedience, but you should have your discernment by understanding the the knowledge and the uh, and the, the knowledge that God has. Understanding the information that has been placed right there before you, so that you can understand. And I said, my son, do not let this wisdom and understanding out of your sight. Preserve sound judgment and discretion. There will be uh, they will be life for you and an ornament of grace around your neck. So preserve it. That the important thing is for you is to maintain your knowledge. Do not let your knowledge, your wisdom, your understanding go. You keep that way. You defend it. You keep it. That it and, and to have sound judgment and discretion with it. And saying, then go your way safely, and uh, and your foot will not stumble. When you lie down, you will not be afraid, and when you lie down, you will you will sleep. Your sleep will be sweet. Have no fear of sudden disasters or of the ruin of the ruin that overtakes the wicked. Now let's think about here's the thing about the wicked. What the wicked is and throughout Proverbs is those who follow foolishness, those who follow folly. Folly and foolishness is ignorance, basically. You are committing yourself to acts and doing things out of ignorance, out of a lack of knowledge, a lack of understanding, a lack of wisdom. Because when you have that lack of wisdom, then you make dumb decisions. When you have lack of wisdom, you you spend more money than you make. When you have lack of wisdom, you put yourself in dangerous situations that is unnecessary. When you have lack of wisdom, you emotionally quit jobs and, and do things like that because you have a lack of wisdom. When you have a lack of wisdom, you go from relationship to relationship to relationship because you don't have self-awareness to know who you are first, then being able to pick the type of person that will match up with you because you don't gain the knowledge and wisdom. You meet somebody and you're infatuated and out of that infatuation, you get married to that person. Then later on when you learn them, you gain that knowledge and wisdom about them, you wind up divorcing them. I've made that mistake. You wind up doing that kind of thing. And the next thing you know, what? You're in a worse situation than you were before you met them. Why? Because you did something out of folly, out of foolishness. You didn't do it with knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. You did not do it with the wisdom that has been presented for you. Because earlier in two, he talks about how that has been planted on your heart, how you know these things. But in the very beginning, he said that he has the father, he has Solomon as his father taught his son this and do not let it go away from you. And again, he's repeating that keep it, preserve it. Don't let it out of your sight. So, don't be a fool. So the wicked, yeah, they don't they don't rest well. Those who do things out of ignorance, they don't rest well. Those who do things out of emotional turmoil, they they don't sleep well. That disasters come to them. You see, it's kind of like those people who, no matter what the economy is, they make money because they have the knowledge and the understanding to make sure that they are protected in certain ways. They move with the market. You see many people in business, they are emotionalize the market. The market doesn't care about your emotions. The market only cares about what it is. So if somebody is, if you see that your market is, is dying, why are you still there? Why haven't you moved on? Why haven't you changed the way you do your marketing? If you know that it, it, email marketing is getting like 12% or below open rates, so why are you still doing email marketing? Very few businesses can still are still successful with email marketing, but you're still doing it instead of moving on over to social media marketing. And even in that, if you're still Snapchatting your business and, you're, and your client is not these little kids, then why are you Snapchatting? And Snapchatting hasn't made it, Snapchat hasn't made itself, in, it put position itself to work well for businesses. But if you're not, if you're not in, in IG, if you're not on Facebook, if you're not moving with the market, and when those things start to fall apart, if you don't move with the market, if you're not moving with the market on YouTube, then you are acting in foolishness. You are acting with folly and ignorance, and disaster and ruin will be you.
will be part of you. It will track you down, hunt you down, and it will destroy you. And then you will sit there and say, why me? Why is this happening to me? I don't know why it's happening to me. Well, it's happening to you because you decided to ignore the information that was given to you. Because you try not to lean on to your own understanding. Now, I know that many people are going to talk, say, well, this is about God. You know, this is, we're talking about God here, right? And, and um, here's the thing about that. You ignore that knowledge. You ignore that information. You can go back through many of my other videos, especially the one about the origins of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. You will ignore the facts that I present. You can go to my video about Moses' aunt, Moses' mama being his aunt, his great aunt. You will ignore those facts. You can go to the video I did about the Noah's Ark, that it was just a made up story. You will ignore those facts. You can go to inf see information where the story of Yeshua is a plagiarized story that's been copied over and over and over and over again, but it's really about, it's about astro theology and it's about you. But you'll ignore that. See, I'm not trying to take it away from you. I, I want you to understand it, that it's about you. It's about you performing a, a, a pretty much you going through the alchemical states to be able to raise your consciousness, raise your body, raise your actions from lead to gold. It's the same thing as what Solomon was trying to teach here about you gaining knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. That's what the story, that's one of the lessons the story is trying to tell you. The story is trying to tell you, not the reality because it didn't happen. The flood did not happen. But I'm, the, the, the analogy of it, the lessons you can learn from it, you will ignore those facts. And as long as you ignore those facts, then this is where that don't lean to my own understanding because people are going against you. Now, here's the thing. When Martin Luther was doing the Protestant Reformation, he was the great falling away. All those people who left were the great falling away and they were not leaning to their own understanding. But most of you are or are, who are religious, who are looking at this, most of you are, 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 are Protestants from a falling away. Those who follow Calvin, John Calvin, you are Calvinist, you are a falling away, you are the reprobate mind. Like if you were doing it back when they did it, you were of the reprobate mind. If you're a Baptist today, you are the reprobate mind. If you are Methodist, you're of the reprobate mind. AME, reprobate mind. Methodist, you're all the reprobate mind. You're all the great falling away. According to when it first happened, that's who you are. You Jehovah's Witness, you are falling away. Mormon, you all falling away. You all got reprobate minds. That's what they would tell you because that's what you would have been called if you would have done it when they first started it. But now it's been accepted because there's enough people who believe it. And that's all a religion is. That's all a denomination is. If enough people believe it, then that's accepted. So discernment is when enough people accept it, then it's God's discernment. But let me ask you a question. The Baptist says that you must submerge. A Methodist and Catholic say you can sprinkle. Who's God given discernment to? Is it to the Baptist or is it to the sprinklers? Who's that? The Duncan or the sprinkler? Who got the discernment on that? The Methodists say that there's a certain methodology to learning and understanding and worshiping. The Baptist say that you got to do it through spirit. It's all about spirit. It's all about the Holy Ghost. Who's the sermon? Who's the sermon? Just asking a question. The Catholics say that you can pray to these different saints and these different saints will assist you in whatever it is that you're trying to achieve, which is kind of like ancestry worship. But they tell you that. But then the Catholic, but then everybody in Protestantism, they don't do that. Who's the sermon? Who's the sermon? But yet, Protestants do call them St. John and Saint Paul and Saint everybody else. You're still using the same ones. So where's your discernment in that? See, there, where's your discernment within your denomination? Because people had different discernments, you have different denominations. But none of them are based on facts. They're based on what people had that people had opinions. I have an opinion that you should be submerged. I have an opinion that you can go with, you can pray to these sainthoods. I have opinions that you take in the, the, the body and the blood and then it's transfigured into your body, into the actual body and the blood. Or others say it's just symbolic of the body and the blood. It's still human sacrifice either way you, either way you do it. Human sacrifice is needed, especially from the male. And I'll do a whole video about the difference between the male blood and the female blood and why the males have to die whereas the females don't die. Some of you may already get and understand that, but if you wanna hear that video, 
in the comments. You know how this works, in the comments. That's where, I, if you want me to answer certain questions. But understand that, that this discernment, this idea of discernment is really about going along with the majority. If the majority or if enough people say that this is the word of God, then that's the discernment. But if you stand alone, then that's your discernment is of the devil. Or it's of your own discernment. Where all Solomon was really saying, all he was really saying is the creator put natural laws out there. You gain the knowledge of those natural laws. And when you gain those knowledge of that knowledge of the natural laws, you will have the, the understanding of the creator. You see, one thing people don't recognize when they read about Solomon is that Solomon was a magician. Yep, Solomon practiced magic. Solomon also was a hermeticist. If you look at the Temple of Solomon, it's built in the hermetic formation that Solomon understood the mystery schools of Egypt and the teachings of Akhenaten. Solomon knew the hermetic laws and went by the hermetic laws. That wisdom, cause and effect, as above, so below, the polarity scale, Solomon, Solomon was a hermeticist. Solomon was an alchemist. So if you wanna truly understand what he's talking about in there, you first have to need to know that Solomon as an alchemist hermeticist, as someone who knew of Akhenaten in the mystery schools of Egypt, who knew the hermetic laws, that when he's saying you will gain the understanding of the creator, the natural laws of how he, how the creator did everything, he's talking about gaining that knowledge having an understanding of it and then implementing it into your life. So how do you do that? Let's look at just one of them real quick. The law of cause and effect. It said up there in that, it said in there, if you maintain and preserve this to your heart that you won't find ruin. What's a cause and effect? You spend too much money, more money than you make. The effect is you, your credit is bad. You find yourself maybe in bankruptcy. You get things taken away from you. You're not able to buy food. You're not able to buy, keep the lights on. You have to make these hard decisions. Do I buy lights? Do I buy lights or do I buy food? Do I buy shelter or do I buy something else? You know, you have to make this, these decisions because your financial picture is not functioning based, based on good wisdom, but the cause and effect law works either way. It doesn't care, good or bad. Now, let's say you spend less money then you make. Then of course the law of cause and effect is when emergencies come up, you have the funds to take care of it. If you're investing money over a 20 year period with compounding interest in vehicles that's providing you at least 10% per annual and up, then, then guess what? Now your law of cause and effect says that in 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, when you're 80, when you're 90 years old, you'll have, depending upon what you've been putting in there, hundreds of thousands of dollars or millions of dollars law of cause and effect. There's no, it's, it's, it's very simple. What you do reverberates in the future. And then the vehicle that you put things in has a vibrational pattern to them. So the law of vibration said that things that vibrate at a higher rate gives you a higher rate of return and moves you up the polarity scale of the desired outcome. Whereas things that vibrate on the lower scale move you down. Let me give you an example. You're taking your money and you're putting it into a, 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 a US bond. Well, that U.S. bond vibrates at a very low level. Sure, it's, it's safe, but it vibrates at a very low level. So you're only going to make so much money off of it. So it's not going to make you millions of dollars. But if you get into some other financial vehicles that vibrates at a higher level, then of course your rate of return is going to be higher. And yes, your risk is a little bit higher, but your rate of return and depending upon how you do it, and who you do it with, and if you fact, then who you do it with, it may, it is generally will give you more money. Now, the thing you gotta be mindful of, that in cause and effects in that vibrational pattern, you have fees. If you're in a mutual fund, you're paying so much money in fees that you're losing money, that you're lo leaving so much money on the table if you're constantly paying fees, whether you win or lose in your mutual fund. So, if a mutual fund did come out and it paid out at 7%, but you paid 3% in fees, you only got 4%. You understand what I'm saying? And then when they put the commercials, your lack of knowledge will let you see the commercials and the commercials will tell you that, oh, the fees are only 1%. Well, that's a lie. You got to dig deeper. See, if you don't dig deeper, then the law of cause and effect said you didn't do your research. You didn't go gain the knowledge to know what you're really paying. So now you're paying 3 and 4% and you didn't know it. And when you're paying that 3 and 4%, look how much money you're losing. How much money you're leaving on the table because you didn't do the research to find the right vehicles for you for your money so you have to that's how these things 
going at. So don't lean to your own understanding. He said earlier about, um, where was it? He said earlier, 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 earlier. Oh, do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. Now, do not be wise in your own eyes. Don't just take life and information how you think it should be. If you need financial support, financial knowledge, don't just try to understand it yourself. Seek out those who are experienced. Seek out those who have that kind of knowledge. If you want to start a business, seek out those who've already started a business, running a business, and are consistently running their business to have them coach you. If you want to have great relationships, seek out those who have had great relationships. Like I had a marriage, my first marriage, high school sweetheart, 17 years of marriage. Yeah. I did some jacked up things towards the end. It was my fault. I take full blame. I will never blame another person for things that I've done. But we had 17 years of marriage and for all, the, all intents and purposes, we had a great time. Our marriage was better than most people. So can I tell you how to have a great marriage? Yes. Can I tell you how to use your emotions and, 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 and what's the word I'm looking to? Um, not impromptu. Ah, you know what I'm talking about. But, um, uh, impulsive and I, can I tell you how to be impulsive and, and be and, and be shackled by emotions to mess it up yes I can tell you how to do that as well which means that sometimes you need to find somebody who has messed something up those people who have messed things up learned from it and have moved on can be your greatest instructor instructors can be your greatest coaches can be the ones who can provide you what exactly you need in order to not mess it up again trust me some of, my, some of my friends, they pick on me because I and I take my time, I thoroughly investigate a person before I commit myself in that relationship. And then even in the relationship, I thoroughly investigate the entire situation and watch the person to discover if we are a good match. Because if we're not a good match, I don't want to involve myself in a marriage with someone who's not going to work well with me, nor should you. You should not. And I know that's, you know that. Here's the thing, you know that. And most of you are self-aware enough to know what is good for you and what's not. Who is good for you and who is not. But yet, you choose to ignore it. You choose to ignore it, follow folly, and get into poor relationships when the knowledge, the understanding was there for you, but you didn't utilize the wisdom of it and be with the right person and make great relationship, whether it's business, whether it's romantic, no matter what it is, you have it right there for you. So that's how you utilize these things. You have to use it in every format. You know what's right, you know what you should do. If you don't know who you are, then you have to go through a process to discover who you are. Now, of course, I have a process to help you discover more of who you are and I have coaching programs to help you discover who you are, but discovering who you are is vital. It is very, very vital and sometimes, the person on the outside looking in can do you a great service, but you gotta know that they're there for your best interest, because if they're not, then it's damaging to you, it's damaging to your life. So, this video has been way long enough. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, next time somebody tells you to lean not to your own understanding, then ask them, well, who understanding are you leaning to? You're leaning on the understanding of the pastor, you're leaning on the understanding of what, what people who have translated this book over and over again and has changed it based on whatever societal norms were. Because some people say the understanding is what the Mormons do. Some say the understanding is, is, is what the Amish do. Some say the understanding is the Calvinist. Some is the Protestant. Some is the Catholic. Whose understanding are you leaning to? Those who decided that what books were going to be in the Bible in the Council of Logosia and the Council of Thessalonica and all the other, you know, councils, you're leaning on their, uh, their understanding. Your show ain't leaning on anybody else's understanding. So I would rather trust myself with my connection with the creator than to trust a bunch of long dead people who are doing things for political powerful reasons or even people today who are just trying to keep you in the church and paying your tithes and giving your money, but you're not receiving any return on your investment. I'd rather lean on to my understanding with the creator than some Somebody who is looking on the outside looking in but they're coming from a position of hurt they're coming from a position of jealousy they're coming from a position of anger they're coming from a position that is not of love and they care about me so lean on to your understanding for the information that the Creator has instilled in you and if you feel if you in your gut in your knower if you know that you need more information then go get it 
go get the proper assistance, get the proper help, get the proper coaching. And I'm telling you, spiritual coaching is something that people are going to need because as we continue in this age of Aquarius, you are going to need help. You are going to need to sift through all of this stuff so that you can just get the gold, get the diamonds, and not play around with these stones that are worthless. So I look forward to you guys. Please continue to support this channel as a Patreon, as a patron on Patreon. And if you want to work with me as a coach, then you can uh, connect with me either here or on my website. Y'all have a great day. Enjoy yourself. Remember, you got to free yourself to be yourself because your greatness is non-negotiable.